Hello, what's up YouTube photographer Ronnie Sweat and I try in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how I did the skin retouching and color grading of this very image in Photoshop and you can see the before and the after so we're going to go through how I color graded the image and got back these nice and rich blacks you can see before and after then also how I cleaned up the backdrop and how I did the skin retouching and finally how I made the white pop and overall highlights in the image pop within photoshop you can see before and after for this very nice studio portrait so the lighting setup i used i used around three lights one for the glow behind and the main light was in front and one for the rim light which was this side so i'm just going to come and delete this and we go through the retouching step by step and we understand what i did when i was trying to retouch and color grade this image within photoshop so I don't want to waste so so much time trying to go through the overall frequency separation process and i'm going to be using my actions to speed up or fasten this process so that the tutorial is not a long one so i'll come to my actions and if at all you're interested in purchasing my actions the link is going to be in the description of this video so you can retouch my or you can get my retouching essentials actions pack and it's going to be containing all these actions so i'll come and i play my 16-bit frequency separation action you can see i have a 16-bit image i'm just going to hit the play button after selecting the action so for this i have to zoom out and look for an area that has more skin textures or skin details than the rest of the image so i'm just going to be using the face as a reference so i'll take up the slider of the radius up to the point when i'm just starting to lose out on the textures in the first area so at around five so that you can see a before and after at around five that is when i'm starting to lose out on the textures so depending on how many details that you have in the image you have to move the radius up to a point when those details are just starting to get lost from the image and i'm just going to hit ok so the action is going to run and that is the advantage of using actions to fasten or speed up the retouching process so you don't have to go through the trouble of creating all these folders and you can see action comes with a black and white whole player but for purposes of being uniform and showing you everything i'm just going to come and delete the black and white layer so after doing this i come and select a low frequency because when i'm retouching images i prefer to retouch or blend the skin tone transitions first so i'll come under the brushes right click and get the mixer brush tool and i make sure i set it right so make sure the hardness is zero percent and make sure it is a clean brush and make sure you select the option that says clean the brush after it and every stroke because as we are blending the skin color we are trying to deal with various various or a variety of colors the weight is going to be nine percent the load of 75 percent the mix of 90 and the flow of 100 percent so make sure sample orders is not checked because when you check this option it means that the brush is going to also carry textures and paint them into the low frequency layer. so make sure sample always is not checked so after doing this just come and hide the high frequency layer. the reason for hiding the high frequency layer is because we want to deal with only the colors that are part of the low frequency layer and we don't want the textures to distract us so we want to see where to even out the transitions within the skin color or skin tone so i'll zoom in slightly by using ctrl command plus with the brush tool selected you can see that when you press the caps lock key the brush is going to turn into a plus icon and when you click or press the caps lock key it's going to get back the way it was meant to be so how to use the mixer brush tool you simply left click and you move the mixer brush tool in the direction of an area or the way an area has been shaped and that is how or the right way to use the mixer brush tool so you left click and you drag and move the mixer brush tool in that direction you can see that this area is moving from this direction that is why i'm moving my mixer brush tool in that kind of direction so you can see that it is really affects the image in real time so i'm just going to be mixing and blending the colors so that they can have a nice and even transition within them or the skin tone so you can see this is very very nice and effective and it is very very fast so always retouch at a distance and make sure the brush really you keep on changing on the brush sizes by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard 
so you have to mix or blend colors that are looking alike and you don't drag a color from one area to another because that is going to change or distort the original shape in either the body structure or the facial structures of a model so i'll just undo that so reduce on the size and mix just like that so you can see i'm using a smaller brush for smaller areas and a slightly bigger brush for bigger areas you can see i'm trying to avoid this highlight because i am going to paint it alone and mix it alone so come to this forehead area and also work on that area because every area that has skin has to be blended and mixed is within this image so right now we are done retouching or mixing the transitions within the skin area so we are going to come back and we turn on the texture layer and you can see this is the before and after before after with just the mr brush tool you have been able to achieve these nice and beautiful results so you can see before after before after so after i use the mr brush tool i tend to only use the lasso tool technique for only the lower parts of the body like the legs so i'll come with the low frequency last two selected and get my lasso tool and make sure the feathering is 20 pixels because i want the selection to have smooth edges i don't want the edges to be sharp so the lower the feathering the sharper the selection edges and the higher the feathering the softer or smoother the pixels or the edges of the selection are going to be so with this done with the low frequency I selected I'll just come and make a selection just like that then come to filter and I'm going to come to blur and I come to Gaussian blur so what I'm going to do I'll just with the radius that we had initial for our frequency separation I'm just going to come to that radius and simply start taking it up up to when I feel like I'm having a nice and even skin transition i'm just going to hit ok i'm going to be applying it onto the other areas of the leg just like that right click and come cushion blur so you can see i'm avoiding the brightest areas of the image because i want to retain those nice and rich highlights within the photo itself so i'm just going to make those selections right click and apply the cushion blur so after i've done this you can say before after before after anything is removing the blemishes so i'll come to the high frequency layer and simply select the clone sum tool the mode is normal opacity and flat 100 percent align is selected and sample is current layer because blemishes are part of the high frequency layer, which is the current layer so after getting the clone stamp tool i'm just going to zoom all the way in and try cleaning up the blemishes so how this works you simply hold on the option or alternate key on the keyboard then when you hold on the option or if at all you're using windows you can use the alternate key on the keyboard option and simply left click on the keyboard and simply copy an area that is close to the blemish and simply replace it with that clean skin or clean area so that is how this basically works when you're trying to clean up or removing the blemishes and it is really an effective way of removing those imperfections or blemishes from images using a uh, photoshop and frequency separation in general so i'll just do a little bit of cleanup and you can see the model really had a nice and beautiful skin so i'll just come and clean up these blemishes and just get uh, these out of the way so that we can go through how or what i did when i was trying to color or color grade and remove this color cast uh, within this very image so you can see we are done retouching the image and that's the quick before after before after so after i did this the next thing i i did was uh color grading the skin to make it pop and add a little bit contrast to the image so i created a stamp visible by pressing shift alternate command e on the keyboard and after i did that i simply came to filter and i came to the camera filter so after that i came straight when my camera filter is open i'm going to come and i target the oranges of the image so what i do 
I come to the color mixer option or the hue saturation and luminance option and I come straight to the luminance and I simply slightly darken the oranges by taking the orange slider down and that is okay. Then I came to the contrast and I simply pumped up the contrast of the image. So you can see the quick before and after before after. So what I did, I also came down to my hues and I slightly made the greens a little bit pop. So I took the yellows towards the greens just like that to make this glow pop in the background. And I opened the image back into Photoshop to do the final adjustment. So after this, the next thing I, I did was getting the wrinkles or folds out of the way. So I got the clone stamp tool and I got rid of this bright area by selecting. So I used the patch tool. I selected this area and I dragged this towards another area that was going to really eliminate uh, that. So that is what I did when I was trying to eliminate that glow. So after this, I came to this area and what I did, I selected this and had to drag it just like that out of the way. So anything is going to be smoothing the background. So what I do, I use the same settings for the Mr. Brush tool with my stamp visible layer still selected. And I'm just going to use this and I mix colors just like that using our mixer brush so i'm just going to be blending this the way you use it for retouching you basically mix colors that are looking alike within the image so this is what i tend to do and i'm this is, i'm removing these wrinkles or folds from the studio backdrop in photoshop so this is what i tend to do i use the mixer brush tool to remove the folds or wrinkles from the backdrop So I'm going to be forwarding this so that this is not a really long process. Hello, welcome back. And you can see that we are done removing the folds and wrinkles from the backdrop. And now the image is getting to look better. So anything I'm going to do is going to be making the blacks a little bit on the black side or the black end so what i did i came to selective color and with this i came straight to the blacks and simply increased on the blacks just like that then i came and i cooled down those blacks just like that and it made this a little bit more on the cyan side so i got rid of the cyans by simply taking this all the way up and that really got me to the black color that i wanted at around eight or nine that is okay and you can see the before and after for just the selective color into this very image you can see the before and after and the image is now popping so what i did last i came to the whites right here then i simply made or took out the yellows from the whites and that made the whites pop then i created another selective color adjustment layer just for the whites then i came and took the yellows out a little bit more and that made the image pop a little bit so i came and i did a little bit of eye whitening by creating a hue and saturation adjustment layer and took out the saturation out of the image completely at around negative 90 and i inverted that by pressing ctrl or command i on the keyboard and i closed this and i came under the brushes right click and got the brush tool for the settings i prefer a hardness of zero percent Opacity in the plot of 100%, and make sure you have black and white right here. Or you can reset by using or clicking on these two small boxes. Or you can have black or white on top by using X on the keyboard, or you can use this arrow. So make sure white is on top. And with white on top, you can now use that to reveal the whitening onto the eye areas or the teeth of our model. So you can just come and paint on the white area, and that is going to whiten the eyes and it is a very simple way to do your eye whitening within Photoshop. So you can see the overall before, after, before, after for retouching this very 
image. So after I did all this, the next thing was saving the image. So I came to file, export, and I came to export as. So when you come to export as, it is going to open up the export as window. And we, in this window, you have the preview, the format of the image. You can see that we have the preview. The format, I prefer JPEG and the quality at 100%. Make sure the sample is by cubic sharper because we want Photoshop to sharpen the image for us. And I make sure the color space is in convert sRGB and also embed the color profile right here. So make sure you check these two options. And when the preview is done loading in this window, simply click export and choose where you want to save the image. So I'll just cancel this. So basically, this is how I recharge and color grade this image within Photoshop. And if at all you love this, don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel. If at all you have been watching and you want to subscribe to this channel, Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.